Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hi, how are you? Remember that little thing called GPU June that I announced like over a month ago? It's uh, June 28th and uh, I haven't I haven't done anything for that. Okay, that's not entirely true. I actually did have like three different ideas, but every time I went to make a video, yet again, another obstacle got in my way. Today's obstacle was this. Yeah, it looks pretty regular, doesn't it? Oh, oh, oh wow, yeah. RIP to this funky WD Velociraptor with a factory window. It's not a mod, that's an actual, like, factory thingamajiggy. Uh, it has a bunch of really, I would say, crucial data to making my life easier when it comes to benchmarking stuff, more notably with AGP graphics cards and whatnot. And, um, I never backed it up. <laughs> yeah, I never backed it up. So we're stuck here reinstalling everything and redoing the AGP benchmarking system, which has actually technically been redone since the last time you guys would have seen it. But that's going to be explained in a different video at a different time. For now, I'm honestly just kind of feeling super demotivated and that sucks. But you know what doesn't suck? This. This doesn't suck. What exactly am I showing you? None other than the legendary ATI Radeon 9800 XT. Yes, this was ATI's fastest offering of 2003, I believe, right at the tail end of 2003. Based on the R360 core, which actually had, I believe, a slightly bigger die size than R350, which is what the 9800 Pro had, this is the fastest thing you could get from ATI, and it was the rival to the GeForce FX 5950 Ultra. And much like the 5950 Ultra, really all it was was just the same thing as the 9800 Pro, but with some minor clock boosts. That's about it. It was quite an expensive card for what little you actually got out of it. Now, most 9800 Pros, at least the R350 based ones, almost all of them were 128 meg cards, whereas the GeForce FX, usually the high-end ones like the 5900 Ultra, were 256 megabyte cards. So there was that advantage of more memory, but at this time, like, 128 was definitely plenty. So basically what you got with the XT was some slight clock boosts and double the memory. At the time, it really didn't make any sense to buy this card. It really wasn't that much better than a 9800 Pro. However, today I don't want to look at the time. I want to look after the time. How does this thing compare in games that came out well after its release? As much as I am biased to the GeForce FX series, because I absolutely love it, it's a definitely well-known fact that the 9700 Pro and the 9800 Pro were legendary cards that honestly were way ahead of their time. So if you sprung out in 2003, honestly kind of right before the release of the X800 series, would it have been worth it? Well, let's find out in today's GPU June video, where we take this 9800 XT and throw some later DirectX 9 titles at it. Things that came out a year or maybe even a couple years after it. One thing to note is that I no longer have a 9800 Pro to compare it against, so we can't see like how much better would it have been against the 9800 Pro in later titles, which is a little bit unfortunate. But again, today's video is just, does it even work well in games that came well after it? And while I'm reinstalling Fear, I thought I would very quickly go over the new AGP test bench and what will be used to actually benchmark this GPU for the tests coming up shortly here. We've got an Intel Core 2 Duo E7500 running on an ASRock 4-core Dual SATA 2. Hopefully, this should alleviate most, if not all, CPU bottlenecks we could face with the older 939 setup I had and the Opteron 180. You can see the main board right here, 4-core Dual SATA 2 running on the VIA PT880 Pro. And as for the driver for the 9800 XT, uh, this is all mumbo jumbo to me. I have no idea if this is Catalyst 8 or Catalyst 7. There's like all these different numbers here. Make of it what you will. It is the Radeon Omega drivers. It's actually the last release of them for Windows 2000 and Windows XP. It doesn't play as nicely with some of the older cards, but this one should be okay. And I kind of need this because I do have the odd 
later ATI AGP card, the ones that use the Rialto bridge chip. As soon as we're done here, everything that I need will be installed and we'll be going straight into the benchmarks. Let's go. To start things off, I wanted to stretch the legs to the 9800 XT by throwing Juiced at it. This is a game from 2005 and we had anti-aliasing quality level 2 alongside the native resolution of the monitor which is definitely higher than 1280 by 1024 it's like 1360 by something. This game is capped by V-Sync unfortunately. We were seeing a minimum of 39, a max of 52, and an average of 45. Very, very, very playable with some great looking settings and overall just a great experience. Continuing into 2005, we have Need for Speed Most Wanted. The settings are on the screen right now. It was mostly high settings, but we did have to drop the resolution down to 1024 by 768. And despite that, the figures here are pretty good, though the min is pretty rough. However, there's an explanation for that. This was due to the map I'm playing on, I guess, being rainy. And in the beginning, when all the cars were taking off and it was showing that splashing water particle effect, it really bogged down the frame rate. But after that initial start, the game remained very playable and was hovering somewhere around the 30 to 35 FPS mark, which is about in line with our average here of 34. So yeah, if you wanted to get the maximum frame rate, I would suggest dropping it down to 800 by 600. But for some people, that might be a deal breaker. Next up was Portal, and this is actually a pre-Steam Pipe version of Portal, so I think it's like 2011, maybe 2012, something like that. Either way, min 35, max 86, and an average of 59, so not bad at all. Uh, the min is a little, little rough, but you know what? That only really happened when you were looking through portals, which I guess is kind of most of the game, but really, it wasn't that bad. It was not like a very disturbing, noticeable hitch, so yeah, I would say this was actually one of the better performing games so far. But can it run Left 4 Dead? Well, this is actually a very, very recent build of Left 4 Dead. I don't even think it's a year old. That said, it was okay. The min of 27 is not good. The max of 69 and the average of 41 are pretty decent though. What I noticed is that if we drop the resolution down to 800 by 600, you could actually get much better frame rates. That said, I mentioned it once, 800 by 600 could be a deal breaker for some people, especially if you're playing on an LCD monitor. So, does it run Left 4 Dead? Yes, and personally, I didn't really notice the minimum that much myself, but I imagine when you're getting into like very intense combat, when like a boomer explodes and there's a horde of zombies, it might be a little frustrating when your frame rates dip to 27 or even below. And to end things off, we're going all the way back to 2005 again with Fear. As I've said many times before, and as I'm sure you're all pretty much aware at this point, Fear is a very intense game, but you can also dial it back so much that it runs on quite a lot of stuff, actually, if you're okay with potato visuals. That said, we tried to get a balance of medium graphics on here with 1024 by 768 as our resolution, and the minimum of 32, the max of 137, and the average of 57 shows that the frame rate is all over the place here. But you know what? I actually played the game instead of running the benchmarking tool and I personally found it to be reasonable. It definitely was a little bit annoying when you would get to that 32 mark, but it didn't really distract from the combat or anything. So again, this would be pretty decent for the time, especially given that this game came out two years after the GPU did. So not too bad. Well, there you have it. The 9800 XT is actually surprisingly okay. When new, this is the car to buy if you really wanted to get as close to that 60 FPS experience as possible. However, it doesn't seem like that's really sort of carried over in time with this card. And you know what? I guess that's kind of to be expected. Things at this sort of time of computing were really rapidly evolving. What was new, fast, and modern would quickly become obsolete in just a matter of months. And I think that's kind of why nobody wanted this card, or rather nobody really bought it, so I should say. Because it had come out already very late in the R300 product life cycle, and there was something big that wasn't quite around the corner, but it was in the not so distant horizon. R400 would debut just a couple months after the release of the 9800 XT, and it absolutely blew R300 out of the water. For about the same price, you would get something that would run the latest greatest games at damn near 60 FPS and anything prior to it at 60 FPS basically guaranteed. That was really insane for the time too. 
And so very quickly, the pricey 9800 XT was, was overshadowed by the far more attractive X800 XT Platinum Edition. And I kind of think that's why these Radeon 9800 XTs aren't really that common because, well, if you were buying this kind of hardware, chances are you knew what was going on in the world of PC parts and hardware and whatnot, and you knew that this thing was coming up. So it really didn't make much sense to drop about $400 on this when it only provided what we can assume and understand to be marginally better performance than a 9800 Pro when the X800 series was just right around the corner and was probably going to cost about the same. But still, nonetheless, the 9800 XT does hold its ground pretty reasonably well in games that came after it. Of course, we do have to make sacrifices like dropping the resolution to 800 by 600 if you want to get a higher than sort of 35 to 45 average FPS experience or maybe bring your mins up a little bit or if you're not okay with doing that and you want to run at like 1024 by 768 well then you're gonna have to make some graphical quality sacrifices but overall it is able to run things much newer than it reasonably well and with how fast things were evolving at that time I'd say that's pretty respectable I mean think about it the GeForce 4 series of cards that came out like what a year prior to this thing, they're absolutely limited by DirectX 8, even though for the time they were monstrous cards, they were so quickly obsolete. So yeah, I gotta give credit to ATI, even though this thing doesn't really make that much sense, it's cool, and it did last quite a while. Anyways, thanks for watching, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one, Bye bye